Hey folks, it's the Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. As you may have gathered, this is gonna be one of my irregular flying type videos. So if you're here for motorcycle stuff, skip this one. Usual service will be resumed next time. If you are interested in flying, stick around, stay tuned. I'm gonna go flying for the first time, solo out of the circuit in the cup. Okay, so the uh, the Piper Super Cub then, this is an aeroplane that I've been learning to fly over the last few months. I've just been signed off to go solo. I've never left the circuit. Today is the day and I'm gonna take you with me. Um, the difference with this plane to the ones that I normally fly is this one, as you can see, has got a tail wheel. It's known as a tail dragger. Uh, wheel at the back, as you can see, it's castering, which means you can't actually steer it in any way. You just do that aerodynamically, but I'll talk more about that as we do it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a very basic aeroplane. I've done all the checks. Let me just show you the cockpit. Here we go, so we can see, pretty basic aeroplane. Uh, nothing too fancy about this. This is a, a sort of plane that was designed, actually originally in 1938, and they were used as a trainer in the war in the US. Uh, this one's a bit later than that, not too much. This is called a Super Cub. These came around about, I don't know, 10 years or so later, 1950s aeroplane, really. Anyway, I've uh, done the checks. I'm gonna get a fader up. Let's go flying. <laughs> Okay, second 1200 RPM. Holding this control column fully aft. All looking good. Right, oil pressure is in the green. RPM set for 1200 mags, check for dead cut. So that's uh, left and right. Make sure they're both on. Radio is on, we're on uh, Waltham. Altimeter will set in the second or temperature. Well, I'm going on. Hold at the moment, shut that window now. Pass your message? Good. For about an hour or so, uh, do you want to rig off? We'll go. Lovely, thanks. Pull the free. Door brakes, release. All right, we're good to uh, taxi then. Let's give them a call. Waltham Radio, good morning. Golf, X-ray, Charlie, uniform, Bravo for airfield information. Radio check. Uh, Golf unit from Bravo, readability 5, 2, 5 left hand, QNH 1020. 2, 5 left hand, 1020, Golf unit from Bravo. Right, we've got the numbers, 2, 5 of the left hand circuit. Let's draw myself a little diagram, so I know what I'm doing. Overhead. Then dead side and in, so overhead at 1200. Uh, Fine, and we're just doing. White Waltham to White Waltham. Waltham Radio, Golf Charlie, Echo, Golf Uniform, Point November uh, for rejoin 2000. Right, first challenge is taxiing this beast. The, one of the difficulties with uh, flying the Cub or a tail dragger generally, which is different to when you fly a nose wheel, so they're a nightmare to taxi, so I'm going to be very careful. They have a tendency to swing to the left all the time. So with the control column fully aft, I'm going to give it a little bit of throttle, take off the heel brakes, and then I'm going to give it full right runner just to get out of the way of these parked aeroplanes. Alright, now I'm active on these rudders all the time. You'll see my feet are moving pretty much all the time. Because the nose is so high, I can't see over it. So to see where I'm going, I have to taxi in S-turns, looking down the side of the aircraft. And because it has a tendency to turn to the left because of the torque reaction of the propeller, I'm ready with that right rudder pedal all the time because what you don't want to do is what's called a ground loop. Right, 45 degrees across the turf. Keeping that uh, elevator fully back. So far so good, dancing on these pedals still through this gap. Loads of right rudder, a bit of left. Loads of right rudder, a bit of left. Loads of right rudder. There's a 2.5 hold over there. These things were designed before uh, ergonomics were a thing. <laughs> Hence, you can see I'm having to put a lot of pressure on the control column to hold it back and use the throttle with my right hand. That's just the way I find it easier because of my arthritic shoulders. Right, so as I mentioned uh, in the opening, I've flown this solo only in the circuit before. I've now been authorised to leave the circuit. That's what I'm going to do today. Nothing too fancy, just going to leave the circuit, a little bit of local flying and come back. Right, here's the 2.5 hold. Just going to turn her into wind. Put my 
the power checks. There we go, and the wind is relatively down the wrong way. Right, hill brakes on this, just to make things even more difficult. Uh, you can't see down where my feet are, but the brakes are on your heels, you have to apply them. Uh, that is a bit of a nightmare as well. Uh, but it does mean you can, that can help you turn the aircraft as opposed to just relying on the airflow from the prop over the rudder. Anyway, let's get it to 1200 RPM and uh, we'll do our power checks. Just give it a quick car peek. Hello, in case there's any moisture around today. Very susceptible to carburetor icing. Golf, golf uniform approaching overhead from the north. We definitely had some there. Right, back to the checklist for the power checks. Right, rinse the wind, hill brakes are on, control comes fully aft, engine gauges. Okay, T's and P's, oil pressure's good. Got some... Uh... Okay, we are good for taking off. Right, this is the tricky bit. I might not do too much talking here. Right, flaps are good. Everything's reading good. Let's have a little look around the circuit and line up. Got a car for overhead. Right, one overhead. Try and get away before he comes. Right. Line her up then, which is harder than it seems. <laughs> Got a few bravos lining up, two five. Right, there's the runway. Here we go then. Round we go. It'll give her a little bit of power to start with to make sure the wheel's straight behind me. Okay, no straight. She's running straight. Okay, full power. Stick forward. Uh, 
uh, Marlow and Henley, have a look over there. Yeah, this is, this is pretty cool. One of the things that the Cub does very different to the, um, the A28, the Cherokees I'm used to fly, is its airspeed. It's all very slow in here, it means you've got a great chance to have a look around, enjoy the scenery, and on the daylight today it's absolutely cracking. The leaves are just turning, they're all autumnal colours, it looks absolutely beautiful down there. This is what flying's all about, isn't it? Right, let's change the fuel tank just because we can. We go to the right tank. You've got to be very careful that you've uh, selected the fuel tanks on this. It's quite easy to turn them off and not realise you've done that. There's all sorts of gotchas, especially in this aeroplane. Once you're flying it, it flies much like any other um, nose gear aircraft that I've flown. except you do need to use the rudder more in turns. Just have a quick look up the wing, this is high wing. See if there's anything around, you just have to lift the wings up to have a little look. There we go. Right, let's give the car a beat a blow, as it's one of those days where there could be some moisture about. This radio is shocking. Given this noisy radio, perhaps I should just overlay this flight with a bit, with a bit of music, is what I was saying. Right, okay, I'm following the river now. Good, turning in the overhead, over the two 
five numbers. Trainer up. Nice throw back slightly and start to descend. Still good to call Bravo's descending dead side two five. Right, coming around looking for 800 feet in the circuit. Put the car beat on as we come down. Still a little high. 1100 feet now. There's the runway we want. Let's see the 25 numbers, one on final. 1000 feet now. You have to make quite an effort to go down in this aeroplane. Right, there we go, there's our 800 feet. Lever her off there then. One on the wrong way. Right, wish me luck folks. Okay, we're crosswind now. There's our 800 feet. All looking good. Brakes are off, undercarriage fix mixture is rich. Indicators, T's and P's, I in the green car beam is on. Pick that off now, hatch is nice and secure, round we come. Bravo, downwind 25 for landing. Right, here we go. There's 25. Now uh, back to 1500. Bring the white arc, let's give it some shrimp. And give it one stage of flat. Right, we're looking for 55 miles an hour on final approach. Which we're doing now, actually. Round we come. Way too high. Now back. We're in the white arc. Let's give it all the flap now. We need to descend big time. Slow it down. It's 55. Coming around. Your beautiful Bravo, turning final 25 for landing. Right, there's our 55 on the nose. A little bit of a uh, oval circuit for my liking, but a little bit of a crosswind. 60 miles an hour now. As we get lower, I can ignore that to some degree and just make sure I'm fully back on the stick when we land. Five miles an hour, feeling nicely trimmed there, so that's good. Gonna hold it here, I have to kick the rudder a bit. 55 is looking good. Looking nice, 55 on the nose, coming down. And I'm gonna round out right back on the stick and go to idle. Okay, back to idle, right back on the stick now. There's the stall warner. Actually, and that was a pretty darn good landing, or I say so myself. Right, dancing on these rudders again. Put the stick in a neutral position. Let's get off the runway. Happy with that? Very happy with that. Right, it's not over till it's over with this, so stick right back. Let's get off the runway. We don't want a ground looper now. Head back to where we found it. So there we are, that's uh, my first solo flight out of the circuit in the Piper Cup. I have to say, I'm really chuffed with that. It went really well. Um, other than the radio playing up, which has nothing to do with me, uh, everything was good. Fantastic views, lovely weather for it. I really enjoyed it. Anyway, I won't get too excited because, as I say, it's not over in the Cub until she's parked up when the engine stops. So let's get her back before we get too excited. Okay, so there you go. That's what's involved in flying the Piper Super Cup. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm really quite happy with that flight, as I say. The landing was actually pretty good for one of mine. And, uh, yeah, really enjoyed that great visibility, nice and calm up there. Uh, probably that may well be it now for my flying of the Cub until next year, because, uh, as I said, these planes really like um, sort of calm conditions to fly in. Best thing early in the morning, like I am now, or last thing at night in the summer. That's when I really like flying this sort of thing. Um, but, of course, there are some calm conditions in winter, so maybe I'll do some of that as well. I don't know. We'll see, but I'll probably have to go up with an instructor if there's too long a time just to knock off the rough edges as it were. All right, there we go. Hope you enjoyed that one. Um, 
every now and then I do these little flying videos, I seem to get good feedback. I appreciate it's a motorcycle channel, so normal service will be resumed with the next video where we're back onto bikes again. But for now, hope you enjoyed that. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.